Hey everybody, welcome to another preview for our round 10 clash with the Sydney Swans. And today, tonight, I have gone all the way to the US to find a guest from the Swans uh, fan base to talk about the game. And I've got my man, Donnie. Donnie, welcome. How are we doing, Terry? So good to be on the other side of the mic, considering you sat down with me for my Carlton Blues Aussie Supporter Series on the fourth and long series for me, the Donnie's Disposal. So uh, good to uh, have the other side of the mic here. Absolutely. And just so everyone watching gets a bit of context into what goes on to organizing something like this, what time is it and where are you? It is 4.30, on just short of 4, it's 4.28 a.m. Des Moines, Iowa time, which is Central Standard Time over here in the U.S. Love it. Love it. Well, like I said before, respect the hustle. Um, but more importantly, mate, we've got a big game Friday night, the Blues, the Swans. And I need to know a little bit about your end and how you're feeling and maybe a little bit more about your journey with the Swans as well and how you got there. Oh, it's it, it's a fun journey for many people just because as, as a U.S. fan, I mean, I, d I didn't have the luxury of growing up with this like many Australians do. So for me, it's I got into it when I was a kid. We had a channel called Fox Sports World and uh, used to watch it all the time. Uh, unfortunately, the channel disbanded probably about three, uh, about two or three years after watching it and got into high school, got into athletics, played basketball, different things like that. And then in 2009, um, I ran into an Australian at a part time job I was working at and they had started a local footy team here in, in Des Moines called the Des Moines Roosters and caught the accent started talking with a rugby and he's like hey we've got an aussie rules football team here in town i was like you're kidding aussie rules football you've got to be kidding he's like nope gave me time place i start, showed it up started training and most of the guys had picked a team so they i kept getting hey you pick a team you got to pick a team you got to pick a team and i eventually just i went on youtube looked up highlights different things like that and there always seemed to be two highlights that popped up the leo barry mark in the 2005 grand final and Nick Davis in the elimination final against the Geelong Cats. And so I kept looking, I kept seeing Sydney Swans all the time. Like, I got to check this out. And then conveniently, I, I kept putting it off. I didn't want to pick a team. And then finally, 2012 comes around and I watched the grand final and I loved the, the blue collar, hardworking, tackling team that, that Sydney was at the time. And I thought, you want to know what? I like these guys. And so I dove into the history and then I saw. The connection with south melbourne so it wasn't just sydney it was south melbourne too so i love the history about it so and then the nickname the bloods was so cool for me so i i got hooked um and that's how i became a sydney swan supporter became an international member in 2016 and uh, haven't regretted it since so amazing amazing you know what you haven't picked a bad club i very rarely if ever have anything bad to say about the sydney swans such a they're just such a great club, great culture. And for someone who's, you know, found the game in the way that you have, uh, I can safely say that you're in good hands because they just do things very well down there at the Swans. Yeah, 100% agree. And and the best part is the fan base has been so welcoming. I mean, I I, I don't know if all of you can see it, but the, the, the Indigenous jersey just over to my right shoulder was actually sent from New South Wales from a, a, a fan who I've been in contact with and she's such a sweet lady and I didn't even expect it. I was not expecting it. All of a sudden it popped up on my front door and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Cause this is the one indigenous Jersey I've been wanting. And then wow. conveniently this year, they finally put out a new indigenous Jersey this year. I'm like, Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Really? The one year I have an indigenous Jersey, they get a new one. Ugh. It is what it is. It is what it is. So maybe let's go down one other layer, the podcast. I want to know how that started and where that's at. Oh, uh, that, that's interesting because it's actually the Donnie's disposals one is actually kind of a kind of a, an offshoot. Uh, when it ended up happening is in the middle of the pandemic, our our host uh, Ross Allen, an incredible guy who's big NFL, UFC, baseball, like all the American sports, and he happened to tweet out in the middle of the pandemic because Aussie rules seemed to be one of the only things that was going on. He goes, he had retweeted an AFL tweet going. Aussie rules is underrated. And I was running the Des Moines Roosters page or the local footy teams page for the club and reached out to him. I was like, Hey, so glad, glad to have you on. He's like, this sport is so cool. And I kind of politely as, as I was easily, um, 
informed him about myself being a head coach in America. And it was like, Hey, if you ever want to talk about it or learn about the sport, let me know. He reached back and goes, yeah, I'd love to. And a week later I'm on his podcast and um, he's like, he wants to know all this things. He wants to know rules, different things like that. That particular podcast was almost two years ago. It has almost 39,000 views. It's the most viewed show on his, on his uh, channel. And so then he's like, Hey, I got an idea. How about we do round reviews? Because I want to keep track of this. This is so cool. So two weeks later, we're doing round reviews for round 10 of the 2020 season. And we've been part basically partners ever since I started the Donnie's disposal series about a year and a half ago during the off season. Cause I wanted to be able to till, still talk footy while the men's season wasn't going on. So I started an American's fan supporter series. So I talked to fans throughout the States who are footy rules and footy Aussie rules, footy fans. And I got everybody except gold coast for some reason they were, an enigma could not find them. And then this last year, your lovely host, Terry Degani was my Carlton fan. And I had all 18 Australian fans. So I'm, it was a blast. I I've loved both series this next year. I think I'm going to do local footy. So I'm, I'm really excited to oh. find some VFL, some waffle, some sandful, maybe even some of the, some of the clubs up North of the, the used to be Neefel. Um, and, and talk local footy and, and find out a little bit more of a little bit smaller, not so easily seen uh, football, especially over here in the States. Yeah, this is fascinating. I think this is a great example of how the game can and will evolve as we go deeper into the future and as the internet, you know, connects uh, nations. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. I'm really, I'm really intrigued and uh, really keen to see how, how the journey goes. Um, mate, the Swans, What's going on in 2022? What's the story? Oh, the easiest thing to say is as soon as I think I got this team figured out, they 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 throw me a few curveballs. I've I came into this season thinking a finals team, finals for sure, potentially top four. It, I was really kind of iffy on it. I just wanted to see how is the progression of the youngsters. How is how does Buddy come back? Buddy plays a lot. Uh, a few more games than I was expecting. I was expecting him play one, play two, take one off, play two, take one off. And he played 12 in a row. So I was relatively happy that he played a little bit more continuous footy than I was expecting and didn't have any injury issues. I mean, a, a few light niggles here, but other than that, he's been on the park. So going into this season, I had expectations finals. For the most part, they've been pretty much about what I've expected. I knew they were going to be inconsistent. I knew there were going to be some games. They weren't going to show up. The Gold Coast Suns game, all honesty, kind of saw that one coming. Gold Coast has been our, they've they've been our bogey team. They've been a team we've always struggled against. I don't know why. Maybe it's, we took them lightly. Maybe we just had a bad day in the park. I don't know. But it, that one kind of didn't surprise me. Brisbane, that one, I think the performance surprised me. I was expecting it to be a little bit more competitive. Brisbane was just better that day, plain and simply. They were just better. So I come into this round against Carlton with, I, I think both of us kind of go with, this is our litmus test. This is our mm -hmm. test to see, are we a legitimate fo top four side? Or are we going to be at the bottom of the at the bottom of the top four uh, of the of the finals? Because I don't think there's enough teams that can beat this one to knock them out of the finals. It's going to be interesting, especially with teams like the Western Bulldogs and Port Adelaide. I think getting stronger as these next few weeks go on with injury returns and different things like that. So we'll have to see. I, I'm 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 intrigued to see this matchup because I think it's two teams that are kind of in, in two different situations. Carlton is everybody's like oh my gosh what what a great turnaround the list is there the the performances are where they are at where sydney was kind of i think a lot of people jumped on the sydney bandwagon and then a couple of iffy performances and then everybody's like well i'm not sure about the swans anymore so it's, it's been a very interesting season for the swans this year yeah i had my moment where i really really truly realized the gravity of of what friday night will be um, like I, I was pretty confident knowing, you know, it's a Carlton home game. We're going to get 45,000 there minimum. I would hope it's going to be loud and we're playing a bona fide team in Sydney. Very, very much like what you've just said. Um, but then Tuesday night, man, it hit me like, because from my point of view, we just haven't played in such significant games that have such relevance to, you know, 
the finals type teams. We haven't had these situations come up. Um, we seem to be passing tests along the way with a few inconsistencies. And yeah, I think that's it's a very even matchup, even though we've got, you know, four times the amount of uh, outs to our best 22 that what you do, but that's okay. We don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. We don't make excuses because um, Vossi's got the group humming along. I'm interested to know, what's your take on Carlton? I've loved watching Carlton. I think they've been absolutely fantastic. Um, seeing Patty Cripps, I think, back to his top nick is absolutely fantastic. The, 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 he is incredible. I know so many in the me so many in the media were like, "It's past him. It's past him. He's 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 an old he's an old hat now. There's no way he's ever going to be the 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 great that I think a lot of people thought he would be." And it's he's really kind of shown up. The, the thing, the one part that I think for me that that if I'm a Carlton fan, I look at and I go that if you just really wish he had for this game, especially is Mark Pittnett. He, I think he he's a huge out. Unfortunately, Hickey's but Hickey's back and Laddams have kind of nice a nice little partnership in this last game. Again, it was Essendon again and again. I, I don't think I take a lot of what happened in the Essendon game and I go. Oh, I can say this, 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 and this. No, I mean, s &M's putrid. I mean, well, let's just be honest. They were. They were putrid. They were, they were dog shit. <laughs> you know, they were shit house. I mean, let, let, we'll be honest. But the thing, though, and I, that I, and I said this in our preview podcast was, is that I think there's some confidence that Sydney can take out of it because they played what? They played better. They played, they got a win. They got some confidence. They got some kicks in it. Not always straight on goal either. But, but when it comes to it, I look at it, Carlton... Kerno is playing out of his skin, which is absolutely fantastic for him because of the, the years being gone. Um, seeing Georgie Hewitt come from Sydney to, to Carlton and, and be as successful as he is, legitimately, I've told many people, I'm so happy for him. I'm happy that he is being able to be shown as the player I think he is. There's a lot of still, still some Sydney fans that are kind of upset he's gone. They, they're not upset with him. They're upset he's gone because it just got to a point where we couldn't afford to keep all of them. And George was the one that had to go. And, and as sad as I am to see him go, I'm happy he's somewhere he's successful. And I think he's been a perfect addition to your midfield, Sammy Walsh, Cripps and Hewitt. That's a great little threesome. You've got Hewitt can play your defensive side. Cripps and Walsh can now be able to roam a little bit more free and use their offensive abilities that they have. And George is still really great with the footy. So, I mean, it's not like he's he's a liability in the midfield when it comes to having the football. So it, I, I think you, you found a, a really good addition there. Um, and just your uh, Jacob Wiedering, I mean, absolute superstar. I mean, he's come in, played well. I'm very intrigued to see how he goes against Buddy. I, I'm very fascinated by that matchup because that's, in some situations, that could make or break this game. If Buddy gets off and kicks three or four, it's going to be a long night for Carlton. If Weedering can keep him quiet down to one or two, you're in the game even more because you know you guys are contested ball absolute freaks, how, how good you guys have been to the mid. So I'm, I'm very interested to see does the ruck battle change that or not? So I'm so fast. This this Friday night game has me on edge so much. I've I've heard people on both sides. There are Swans fans absolutely scared out of their gourd of this game. There are Carlton fans. I've even had a few reach out to me and go, I mean, you guys are gonna smoke us. I'm like, no, this is this is gonna be a close game. I'm hoping this comes down to the fourth quarter. I absolutely want this to come down to the fourth quarter because this will be a Friday night belter for sure. I could not agree more. I think it's going to be a special night one way or another. You know, um, we are now known for the first, you know, nine rounds of the season moving into the 10th as this contested team, this tough team, this powerful team. I think for us, we've still got a full season to, to finish before we fully earn the respect of everyone. But, um, you know, it's Sydney have always had the tag of being a tough contested team. So, we are merely just joining the group of teams that can play a tough brand long enough. And yeah, that's where it's tantalizing. You know, we're obviously, yeah, we're missing certain key players, but at the end of the day, the ball is won. And for the most part, I would say the game is won and lost and it begins in the midfield. Mm -hmm. After every goal, the ball goes back there. And, you know, our mids just have been pretty consistent this year as a group. And um, I, yeah, it's, like I said, it's very rare. It's very rare. To, it's, 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 this is new territory for me in many ways. So I really am looking forward to seeing how we're going to respond to the next layer of challenges. And I'm probably less 
fearful of Buddy. I know Buddy's special and all, all respect to him, but I'm probably more fearful at this point of the guy that you're standing within, Papley, and mm-hmm. um, and Isaac Heaney, because it's those types that generally give us issues. You know, we've brought in Lockie Plowman last week and had a really good game now the week before, sorry. And, you know, he usually gets the matchup on these small slash meetings, but you've got two of them that are super dynamic in their own way. So, you know, they're the ones that, that, that worry me, obviously, at Marvel, dry deck, fast deck. Um, you're a quick team with the ball movement. We like to move the ball quickly when, and run and overlap when we're at our best. So it just promises to be fireworks, Donny. That's that's what I'm seeing. I'm I'm 100 with you. I think this I think this is going to be a high scoring game. I think this is going to come down to who can who can um, kick who can um, rebound out of the D50 the best yeah, because yeah. both teams are really good. Once that ball goes in, it it takes a bit to get it out. So that that's the biggest thing there. I, I would almost look at it like this is that when it comes to Papley and Heaney, the other thing that makes them dangerous too is the fact that they can go into the midfield and, and kind of give the youngish midfield, which I, I think I look at it as, is that in all, you now have the more experienced midfield, which most games you went into, at least over the last previous seasons, you've had a younger midfield. Cripps and yeah. Walsh are younger players. Warner, I mean, Robottom's unfortunately out, but that means most likely Ollie Florence going to come from that kind of halfback flanker, which he's been playing the last couple of rounds due to Harry Cunningham being injured. Florence going to come back into the middle. Wouldn't be surprised if Blakey and McInerney spend some time on the wing a little bit. So our midfield is still relatively young um, compared to normal years. I mean, yes, we've got Joey Kennedy. We've got Luke Parker, but I mean, they never played. The very rarely are they playing together nowadays. One's in the forward line, the other one, or one's in the back line, and then one's in the middle with a mixture of Robottom, Warner, Florent, all that. So it's like they've been able to fluctuate through the middle a little bit, which I think has kind of helped them not run out of steam halfway through the first half, which we did have some troubles with in previous seasons. But I mean, the midfield matchup is is in, interesting to see. When Callum Mills goes in, does he tag? Does he tag a Cripper? Does he tag a Walsh? Does he tag a Hewitt to kind of change the game a little bit, or do we just play straight up and go, "Hey, winner wins"? Yep. So let's let's uh, move towards wrapping up. I need to know a prediction from you. I'll do the same. I'll let you go first, seeing as you're the guest this time. What's uh, going to happen? Okay, I, I, in my podcast, I told everybody, I said, this is going to come down to the fourth quarter. I I legitimately believe this. I think this could come down to a kick after the siren, potentially. I've, I've heard this discussed by a few people. I just think with, with Carlton's, sometimes they've had some issues defensively a little bit. They're, they're still shown a few vulnerabilities. And, and I think it's getting better. Vossi has really come in and I think kind of changed everything. But the Williams injury, you have one less body that's going to rotate there, there in the defense. So it's going to kind of see how it goes. I think Carlton, I think Sydney wins this, but it's by less than a goal. I think it's late. I think this is one of those where a behind late in the game gets a, a one or a two point win for Sydney. But I think this is a game both teams can walk out confident because they'll have played a very good team and played really, really well. I don't see this being one of those 20, 30 point wins where somebody surprisingly has a bad game. I think this is absolute champagne footy. This is a great Friday night. Cannot wait for this one. I think Sydney wins it by two. When Carlton scares me with their ability to score, that I'm not super confident on that tip at all. Okay. Okay. Well, for me, I think this will, I think Carlton will win. I think Carlton will win by eight points. And I think tomorrow night at, in Melbourne, like the full belief of the entire fan base finally connects. And uh, because there are still some people that still need a bit more convincing, which is fair enough. It's been 26 years of absolute nonsense, Donnie. Nonsense, mm-hmm. I tell you. So I think we'll win close. Charlie Kerno, too good, too good. Loves Marvel Stadium, dry footy. The ball will be coming to him on a silver platter. And I think he will have anywhere between six to seven shots on goal. And whatever he does with them, he does with them. And I think tomorrow the whole city gets painted navy blue and it's going to be a sight to behold. It's going to be fun. I and I can I can completely see your particular thing, and, and I know that with the Carlton fan base, and this is for me. 
I'm, I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy to see the success there. I'm happy to see the energy. Like I, I said it in one of my pod, I said it in one of my podcasts. I said, hearing the roar of the Carlton fans in the first game of the season out roar the Richmond fans was incredible to hear. I, I was absolutely loved seeing that. And I'm so happy for you guys. This is the one game that I won't be, that I won't be behind you guys, but the, there's one thing there's mutual respect between the two, because I think Carlton, you guys are due for this. I think this is the season you guys make finals. I cannot wait to see that. Who knows? Maybe we cross our fingers. We see each other in the finals again. I think it'll be fantastic. So, so good luck to, to Carlton. I cannot wait for this. I'll be up at 10 till five in the morning for this one, because the game starts at like five 20 or like five o'clock my time. So I will be up with my swans gear watching, but knowing that this is going to be a cracking game of football, cannot wait. Love it, mate. Well, Donnie, I appreciate your time. Appreciate the grind. Um, 4.30 in the morning, wake up just to chat to me. Uh, all the best with your work. Uh, we'll obviously stay in touch. I look forward to jumping back on the other end and, and you ho- you hosting me. And, uh, mate, we'll chat soon. No problem. Cannot wait. Hey!